For today, we are going to work on variables and variable expressions. And what that means is sometimes in math, you can take a letter or like, like A or B or X, and you can have it stand for something else. So this might be a review for some of you. I might be brand new too, but it's really not that bad. So I'll show you some examples of this and then just pay close attention to those. And then I'll show you how you substitute them in. And then after that, you'll have an assignment that's in on this Shobi. It's attached to the Shobi. So you just figure out that assignment. And then there's some IXLs that you work on with those. So uh, today, just watching my video, listening to it, then doing the, the problems that are on Shobi that are listed, and then working on your IXL. And then you'll have work time with that. If you are not done with uh, any of the things from the other day, especially like doing the, the assignment and then listening to the video with the answers, Please work on that after you get done with this for today. All right, and then work on any missing IXLs that are listed up on the board. Variables. What variables mean is pretty much something stands for something else. So I can say, like an abbreviation, um, J might stand for John, if we all agree upon that. Well, variables, when you're talking about in math, you have to have some kind of agreement about it. So we could say, a can stand for something. We might not know what it is, but if I say that A stands for zero, then any time within that situation that I have an A, A will stand for zero. If I say X, X stands for two, then any time that we would see an X, it would stand for two. Now the question you're asking is, why in the world if X stands for two, why would you even need to do that? I'll show you coming up. In a situation where x equals 2, if I said that 2 times x equals 4, well, duh, we don't need to know that x equals 2. Sometimes x can stand for more than one thing. Oftentimes, we would say n equals a certain number. Situation would be if it costs $5 for a ticket to a hockey game, and I wanted to buy three tickets, I would just take five times three. Now remember, the raised dot, that means multiplication. So five times three equals 15. But sometimes I don't know how many tickets I'm going to want to buy. So I would have to say, oh, it's like, oh, well, how much would the tickets cost? It depends on how many people. So I would just say five times N. And then I can find out later what my costs would be. If n equals 2, then I just very simply substitute in the 2 for the n. And that's the, the big thing for today, is substituting in a variable with a number. So you're taking a number, and you're substituting it into for the variable. And your plug and chug is um, Miss Williams, who's a 7th grade teacher. She always would use that. She would say, plug it in and... Work the equation out, plug and chug. And this situation would be 5 times 2 equals 10. In a similar scenario, if it was $5 for a ticket to the hockey game and we wanted to find out how much it would cost us total, so we don't know, if n... 5 times n gives us how much it will cost us. The n is the, the number of people going. If we said we want 20 people to go, so if n equals 20, then you just replace it, plug and chug. It would just be $5 times 20 equals, and our number is going to be 100. So you're replacing it in these situations. You can get a very wide variety of uh, types of problems for these. You can have well, m plus 4 equals something, and we don't know what that is. If we say, oh, well, I can't solve that problem, but I have to say, hey, I know that m equals 4, then we are able to, to turn this, and it would be 8, because we would substitute it, rewrite it, 4 plus 4 equals 8. If I took x 
minus 7, and I don't know what that equals, and I wanted to solve for that, I would say x minus 7. Well, if we knew that x equals 10, then I just substitute it in. I would say, oh, let me just change this x to a 10. 10 minus 7 equals 3, and that would be 3. When we write these things, they're not necessarily equations. Equation has to have an equal sign. So if I have 3 plus 4 equals 7, this is an equation. But if I just have 3 plus 4, that is an expression because there's not an equal sign. The ones we're doing with the variables for today are just expressions, and we're just evaluating them or solving them. So the trick evaluate, evaluate means come up with what the answer would be. They're not equations. They don't have equal signs. Let's do a bunch of examples from here on. 3 plus y. An expression. But if y equals 4, then I would just rewrite this as, I'm going to plug and chug. I'll take the 3 plus, and now I'm going to take this 4 and put it in for the y. And then I actually can make it into an equation this way, and I would get 7. Five minus y would be the expression. And since y I know is 4, I would just rewrite that as 5 minus 4. It gives me 1. I'll circle the answer just to see what we have. Now, one thing that we do need to know, and I'll back off before I, I go on with this next one. If you see 3 times 4. The raised dot means multiplication. This means multiplication. Now, you can see like x is a variable, so that's why we want to try to avoid using that x thing. So we try to say, let's not do it. Let's make a, let's make a dot. There's another way to write it. 3 and 4. If you notice, there's no space between those two, and there is a, a parenthesis. Don't worry about the word of operation parenthesis on this one. But if there's no space between them, and anything, if there's no space between things like this, that means multiply. So no space means multiply. That can also lead like this, 3y, no space, right? It means multiply. So no space means multiply. Getting back to the these, these expressions, I'm going to do 4y. So I want to evaluate 4y. I know that y is 4. So I'll just replace this. Notice that there's no space between those. No space means multiply. So this would just be 4 times 4. The answer is 16. If you see one like, now division may, might look different. You might have 16 divided by y, which is fine. That's not bad. So 16 divided by 5, by y, I'm sorry. And y is 4, so you just plug and chug. You take 16 divided by 4. The answer is going to be 4 because we substituted the 4 in for the y. You might see it like this. And we'll definitely see these ones like this later, where you would take, it would show up like 16 over y. Now, when you see like this, it's a fraction, the line like that, that means divide. So when we do variables and we do expressions like this, instead of writing the divide sign, because that gets kind of confusing, they usually write it as a fraction. This reads 16 divided by y. So if you see that line, it means divide by, and that's actually what fractions do mean. With any of these expressions, you could have more than one thing going on at the same time. We could say a equals 5, b equals 3. You can do a lot of different things with that. So if I said a plus b as my expression, I just need to plug and chug. 
So I'll take, replace the A with the 5, and I replace the B with the 3 with the 3, and I get 8, and that's my answer. You get some other ones like A minus B as the expression. Very simple again, that's just 5 minus 3. I'm just substituting the numbers in. I'm just plugging and chugging. You could get other situations like this, though. You could get a B, so like multiplication. No space between means multiply. So then it would just be 5 times 3 is 15. So I can use those two variables. And I could also get B over A. And that kind of gets weird. It actually would be a, it ends up just being a fraction. And that fraction would be 3 over 5. It's 3 fifths. Or if I wanted to work that out, it would be 0.6. So I can use two of those in those situations. I could get some other things happening too. So if I went C equals three and D equals six, I could do something like two times C, D. So two C, D. No space between any of them. So it'd be two times C and two times D. It's all multiplication. So I just plug and chug those. It would be 2 times 3 times 6. And then I just work those out. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 6 is 36. So I'll end up with 36 as my answer. You could do other things like 2 times C plus 5 times D. And you still... All you do is you substitute them in. You just plug and chug, do exactly what it tells you to do. It just tells us to take two times three plus five times six. I use the order of operations, so left to right, multiplication and division, and then do that addition after the fact. I would just get six plus 30, and then my answer is 36. So I just have to take it step by step using the order of operations and go through each of them by substituting in the variables that they tell me to put in. You might be asking yourself, like, well, who decides what these numbers and letters, what the letters stand for? Sometimes it's just random, and other times it's, it's laid out for a certain situation. Like N oftentimes means the number of things that are happening. X can stand for um, the, uh, the value on a number line. Another situation, we'll have m equals 5, n equals 3. And yes, the same letters can stand for the same numbers. It all depends on the situation, and they have to tell you what the situation is. So in this situation, the ones that I'm going to be writing here, m always is 5, and n always is 3. You can have a problem like this. m squared plus n squared, or the second power, order of operations. Just plug these things in. m is 5, so it's going to be 5 to the second power plus 3 to the second power. And we would do, no parentheses, exponents next, 5 times 5. Second power means times itself, so 5 times 5 is 25 plus... 3 times 3 is 9, so 25 plus 9, and my answer is 34. So this would be 34 in this situation with these guys. For some of these, you might get other expressions would be like 2 times n squared, and you'd have to solve that. All you do is you plug it in. There's no space between these just means multiply, so it would be 2 times, you plug that in, 3 squared, 
Then you do exponents. 3 times 3 is 9, so it would be 2 times 9. And that answer is 18. So you would just have to plug them in and do those. You might get longer ones where they're asking for the order of operations. And you just have to go through. Same order of operations for all of them. These will even work for fractions. So if A equals 1 fourth, you can have 4A, and then you just have to solve it. There's no space between those. So it would be 4 times 1 fourth. Thinking about those fractions from before, we'd have to multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. If you put 1 on the bottom of that, it just becomes 4 over 4, top times top, bottom times bottom. And 4 over 4 is the same as 1. So if it does show up as 1 with a, a fraction within that variable, just plug it in and solve it as you go. In this situation, you might have a squared. Now if it's a squared, 1 fourth is going to be substituted in for a. It's just 1 fourth squared. That just means 1 fourth times 1 fourth. 1 fourth times 1 fourth, you're all very capable of doing that. Top times top, bottom times bottom, it's 1 16th. Your assignment now on Shobi, it's just listed below this, is actually it's page 453. It's 1 through 8. And then page 455 is 19 through 16. You do it right on Shobi. The, the questions that you're supposed to answer are circled. Make sure you plug and chug those. After you get done with that, then you work on your IXLs. Then your IXLs are Y4 and Y5. Those are in sixth grade. Same thing where you're just plugging and chugging. They'll give you an expression, and you just put the variables in there. They'll tell you what the variable is. Working on those, and then after you get done with that, you can work on any of the other IXLs that you have to do, but make sure we're getting everything done.